Okay, hello everyone watching to the first episode of Silenced by the Sage with me, your host Jake, my good friend, also Jake. And Jake, I'm gonna go by Jacob actually, so that way maybe we'll make it easier for people. How considerate of you. <laughs> well, I've actually I've been doing that lately, so good to know, Jacob. I don't I don't mean to interrupt your your no. intro, but a traitor that's okay um <laughs> no just kidding okay so jacob and i will be getting into and demonstrating uh this practice that was inspired by a couple other practices that i saw from john revaki and a combination of the dialectic and dialogos and circling and if you don't know what that is it doesn't matter the idea is we're going to play a role-playing game actually and Unlike most role-playing games where a lot of times the idea is to kind of escape this world and get out of it to another more enjoyable, fun one, this one is actually designed to actually let us get more deeply into this world. And I'm sure people have noticed that if you play D&D or other role-playing games, in enacting another character and in getting to be someone that's not you, you actually get to try on character traits and aspects that you're wouldn't otherwise as yourself and it actually might bleed into your life and you actually get a sense of getting to try out other ways of being in these games so in this we're actually just taking that principle and making it a little bit more explicit so as i said the game is called silenced by the sage and the idea is that one person is going to take on the role of the sage for another person and you can pick whoever you want a real sage from history like Jesus or Buddha, from mythology and folklore like Merlin, or from fiction like Uncle Iroh or Galadriel. And the idea is you're trying to role play as them and get into what it's like to be them, what kind of things they would say, what kind of things they would think, the perspective they would have. And it kind of works well for both people because for the sage, you get to kind of inhabit in this role and try on these character traits. And the other person gets the experience of talking to a wise person. And so obviously, you're not actually wise, but there's something about trying it on that actually brings out the innate wisdom that you already have that you might not lean into normally. And so what this will look like is we're going to be doing it with the sage of Socrates today, because this practice was inspired by, it was originally done with just Socrates, and then we kind of expanded it out. So we'll be doing Socrates, and we each have a different quote from him that we'll use. And what it'll look like is this. So I'll, say I'll go first, and then I'll say whatever the quote is, trying to do my best Socrates impression, maybe stroke my beard or whatever I think he would do. And I'll say, for example, common quote of his, uh, wisdom begins in wonder. And then Jacob will reply, Socrates, are you trying to get me to see whatever you think he's trying to get you to see and that language is important as opposed to socrates is this what you mean because this what you mean kind of gets us into the idea of definitions and semantic and trying to get to the right definition the right interpretation where in what you're trying to get me to see really more invokes oh is this the perspective you're trying to get me to have and really trying to see beyond what your first interpretation of the quote is, what you hear on the surface and actually see more deeply into it. So the sage will say the quote, the other person will say, Socrates, are you trying to get me to see blank, 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 and go on for, you know, 30 to 60 seconds of what you think he's trying to get you to see. And then I'll reply as Socrates. And obviously I don't know what Socrates would say, but a pretty decent frame for how a wise man might draw someone out is really similar to the yes and idea of improv, where I'll first say something that I appreciate about what I heard, something that seems like they're onto something. Yes, yes, when you say this, I think you're starting to see what I mean. But also something you anticipate. And here where I still notice there's something lacking, there's some mystery. What happens if you look over here and direct them to something that they're maybe not seeing yet? And you don't have to stick to this frame, but it's a really nice scaffolding for how to enact the sage role a little bit. 
So you'll give both something you appreciate, something you think they're onto, and then something you anticipate, something that you think is still missing, still mysterious about what they said. And then you'll repeat the quote. So you will really listen. Wisdom begins in wonder. And then it'll go right back. And he'll go, Socrates, are you trying to get me to see and try to see deeper beyond the last thing he said and taking into account your reflections and trying to see more and more. And the idea is we'll do this back and forth for about 10 minutes and then we'll switch roles. And then we'll get a new quote and it'll go the other way. And it sounds like it might get repetitive, but you'd be really surprised at how deep an exploration can open up in just this simple model. And allows you to, after you've done the exercise for five or 10 minutes, however long you want to do, then you can just free form, continue the conversation as yourselves, but with a little bit broader, more curious, I even want to say a, um, a perspective with more wonder. And so you can always take it on afterwards or just wrap it up and call it a game and then maybe do a different quote or see what it would look like to integrate whatever you found into your life. And it can be a real philosophical, self-transformative exploration. And it can also just be fun to just try on playing other roles. So whatever one of those levels sounds appealing to you to try, I invite you to um, try this out for yourself and let us know what you think in the comments. But I think, um, Jake, unless you have anything else to add to that, we can get um, into it. Well, I mean, before we 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 started recording, we actually took a moment just to like really collect ourselves and try to like make the transition possible so we can enter into a space where it's more likely that we can tune into some of this sage-like quality of, of thinking and supporting each other through this. Like just a quick drop in meditation, just centering grounding um, any, any form of that. I, I, I just wanted to bring that in because I feel like for me, at least that's been a crucial part of what makes this more, more possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Totally. And then also the other thing that came up into mind was like, um, even if you're like 1% more Socrates, like I, 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 I have faith that that 1% is 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 still a movement it's still a progression towards more depth more meaning and and also the fun aspect that you brought into it like not it's i the thing that i love about this practice is that it's not it can be dry if you make it dry but most of the time it's not it's it's really playful and it's really a, a, a fun experience so you have both of those together and just lean into that i think that that's that's an important aspect is just to have fun and be playful with it. Well said. And with that, I'll set a timer for us for 10 minutes. And then assume the Socrates role. So we don't have to do a whole meditation together. Maybe just a quick close your eyes, get into character as Sage, get into character as the pupil. Quote I'll be working with today. Be slow to fall into friendship, but when you are in, continue firm and constant. Mm. Mm. Okay, Socrates. So you're trying to imagine you're trying to get me to see the value of of letting go in friendships of uh, when you're when you meet somebody and, and you're trying to develop a friendship letting go of the need to try to make anything happen is that what you're trying to get me to see mm. trying to make anything happen there definitely is an element of letting go of surrender that i definitely think is important here but there's also Again, the continuing firm. There's something about having a resoluteness both in and around your surrender. Really listen. 
Be slow to fall into friendship, but when you are in, continue firm and constant. Mm. So surrendering to allowing the friendship to blossom, but as soon as there's like something catches, as soon as that spark kind of catches, something blossoms, that friendship starts to take root, then then there's a shift. Are you trying to get me to see the value of of of, of nurturing and caring with a kind of resolute determination for that uh, a, a kind of I feel I feel protective when I when I think of that is there like a protector quality mm. to this friendship yeah I think you're definitely getting closer I like how you named the spark that catches there is a turning point it doesn't mean you're in but the recognition of a growing of a blossoming as you said and something about this protectiveness also seems right. That there's... No. When your friend is acting in a way that is drawing them away from you or down a path that is hurting them, you, you get angry. There's a, there's a ferocity almost that comes with it. And also... But I also want to emphasize there's this space of even in that ferocity needing to let go needing to commit yourself to knowing them but not thinking that you know best really listen be slow to fall into friendship but when you are in continue firm and constant mm. 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 There's Socrates. Did you use, use use the word ferocity, like ferocious? Yeah. Hmm. Socrates, your digital connection is a little shaky for me right now. <laughs> Coming back from two and a half, two point five hundred years. Uh, or yeah, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I trust that you're wise, even though you don't have proper knowledge of the internet. Um, yeah, so ferocious. That word just stood out to me. Like, like there's 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 a like a yeah with that protector quality. There's like a almost an energy I'm 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 seeing and feeling like of the quality that I would have towards my child, mm. like, like, and, and, and that may be the quality of the potential uh, that, that, that child has to give to the world is in some sense, similar to that, what I'm, what I'm protecting in, in the friendship that, that is, is emerging mm. of all all these possibilities of what that friendship could become and who I could become and what the world could become. It is, is there's a, there's a sacredness that, that when I, when I, when I, when I see that sacredness, the ferocity, the ferociousness doesn't seem as uh, dark and evil. Mm. It seems, it seems supportive of life rather than, uh, a threat to it How, am i seeing more socrates yes yes there's something of the mother bear quality in that ferociousness it is a nurturing but it is a protecting and mm. like the child yes there is a whole becoming that you are tending to and cultivating but also like the child lest we forget that by overly bearing down and overly trying to pull the burgeoning plant out of the ground, we actually can uproot it. So there is a tending, but also an allowing. Really listen. Yeah. Be slow to fall into friendship. But when you are in, continue firm and constant. Mm. 
be slow to fall. And, and, and here's the silence and it feels very pregnant. And I'm just holding that right now. Like the child or like the seed we can't just rip the plant out of the seed into a you, there's there's all of that which we are dependent on that precedes us that makes the relationship possible that is deserving of both that quality of of the slowness a feeling of 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 trust around that trusting in like trusting that process trusting having 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 faith that what made you is going to continue to create in in as you engage in this relationship with care with that slowness And, and, and that, that there's a fragility to it. There's a fragility that requires that, 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 that care, that slow, the, like, like, a, like a caress rather than a grasp. Mm. And, and letting go of like a mother, like a mother. And that this, this will be, I'm going to offer this and see and see if I'm getting close, getting closer. And then I'll hand it back to you. It's like this with, with the mother often, I feel like there's an, the, a protective energy around wanting to mold and shape and for what we believe is the betterment of, of the friendship or the, or the relationship or our child or what, and in the amount of times in my life that I've done that, and it's been the very factor that has destroyed mm -hmm. the friendship, mm -hmm. really evokes the level of care that seems like it doesn't just end after you've fallen into the relationship. It, the fall continues in, in, in the firm and constant. The fall the fall continues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so, you're starting yeah. to get it. I think you're starting to understand the sense of this nurturing, firm and constancy that is tending to, but also letting go. And I just want to emphasize one more time the beginning of it, of the being slow to fall in. Because yes, there is this dynamic, beautiful, caressing, loving giving to the friendship once it's in but also that is a lot of energy so trusting mm. and being slow to commit yourself to anything so one last time really listen be slow to fall into a friendship but when you are continue firm constant mm. You emphasize it to the to be slow to fall. I can't possibly have the quality of friendship that I have with you, that I have, that I would like to have with all the people that I would like to have that friendship with. With all. there's 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 a finitude of my time and my resources. Mm -hmm. in my energy, in my care, and a tendency because of how how strong that care can be, how 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 consuming that flame of 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 care of the caress can be that sometimes it can overreach itself. 
it can overextend beyond its the limitations of its own finitude to mm -hmm. the point where the inevitable result is the lack of sustainability of of any particular friendship and so what what is coming for me and what i'm wondering if you're helping me to get to see is to 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 care for myself the friendship that i have with myself in much the same way but even more so as a kind of like a priori it must come first to inform the relationship it's dependent on my relationship with myself to know where those boundaries are and how much of myself i can give to a friendship is that what you're trying to get me to see i believe you see much more clearly than you did before and with that can you take a breath close your eyes i've soaked that in a little bit and then we come out we'll have switched roles What wisdom do you have for me today, why Socrates? Today, I believe the wisdom lies in the phrase, beauty is a short-lived tyranny. Hmm. I'll say oh. it one more time. Yeah. Beauty is a short-lived tyranny. Hmm. I will be honest, Socrates. Initially, I'm having a hard time getting what you're trying to get me to see. It's the inkling that it comes to me. So you're trying to get me to see at least this, that one attribute of beauty is that while, while I am present to beauty, while I am engulfed in it, it actually has kind of authority, kind of command over me. That there's a sense that it actually is um yeah, like part of my agency is kind of consumed by the beauty because it is just so um other and more and and more beautiful than me. That there's a kind of giving myself over to it or uh, the word tyranny, I don't know if it's giving myself or getting taken by it, but is something like that what you're trying to get me to see? Mm, yeah, the words you speak, it consumes part of your agency. And because of the fact that it is so beautiful and it's so beyond you, there's a drawing, there's a drawing in, and the consumption, there's a restrictive quality, a narrowing. Mm. And I'm going to reread this go back to you again and i'm going to emphasize one aspect of this is the beauty is the short-lived tyranny mm. 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 yeah yeah i think i heard something different in that so this time it's not i think what you're trying to get me to see is it's not just that kind of for the duration of time that i'm in presence of beauty it kind of has a tyranny over me but actually that it might Jake, be I'm short. Pause you. Yeah. I can't hear anything that you're saying right now. Oh. Um really. For some reason I lost all of the sound. How about how about now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. That's weird. Um go ahead. What yeah. So I, I heard something different in the short lived. The first time I heard that, I thought you were trying to get me to see that like for the time the span of time that I'm in the presence of beauty, it kind of dominates me as a tyranny over me in a sort of way. But what I heard that time is like, actually, maybe initially in getting struck by beauty, 
it has a tyranny over me. But then in what I say, conforming to it, meaning to it, I actually get my agency back by kind of taking it into me. So it's there's a kind of getting consumed by it and a consuming it kind of neutrally. Is that what you're trying to get me to see? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The this bi-directional quality of consumption. You are being consumed and you are consuming a contraction of the agency and an expansion of the agency or for the sake of that expansion. And I want to, I want to, I want to invite you to consider some of these beauties in your life. Mm. Where, where have Mm. these beauties occurred and, and how have they been? a form of tyranny for you in that short-lived sense. Just hearing that is very confronting, Socrates. Um, Yeah. Like, the simplest way I can imagine in, in, in reading a great book, like, the way that it kind of draws me back to it, that I'll be doing other things, and it'll be sitting on my shelf beckoning me to go read it again. There's that aspect, but I hear you saying more than that. I hear you trying to get me to see more than just that aspect of tyranny. Like, in the way that when, it's not just that it leads me to itself, but it actually leads me beyond itself. In the way that when I hear a great song, that I'm actually taken with the impulse to go create on my own or go live differently. And not differently in a trivial way. Like another instance of beauty I can think of to get specific, Socrates, is when um, in a book I was reading yesterday and it just clicked things together in a way that actually opened me up to seeing something as real that I only intimated, but I actually got to feel it and and it was so beautiful that I like I felt I needed to be different and in that way I almost don't even perceive it as short-lived in the sense that it continues to change me and I'm starting to wonder if what you're trying to get me to see is that the short-lived tyranny is in the initial confrontation of beauty, it kind of makes me be different. You you must change your life, right? But mm-hmm. but in letting that in, it actually no longer is a tyranny imposed from the outside. It becomes a part of me. Is that what you're trying to get me to see, Socrates? Mm-hmm. You're you're seeing beauty much deeply. <laughs> A beautiful sentence there, Socrates. <laughs> and this demand that beauty calls upon you in the books and in the music and and all of these manifestations of beauty, there's a short-lived tyranny that mm, perhaps it sounds like, if I'm hearing you correctly, the tyranny lies in the attitude and the orientation. Mm. So I'm going to read it one more time. I'm going to say beauty is a short-lived tyranny. Also finding myself silenced. I I don't know what you're trying to get me to see, Socrates, but I'm starting to taste on the outside edges of what I was seeing. 
of this compelling aspect of beauty on the sense of not only does it draw me back to itself, but it directs me beyond itself to be different. But that's a part of it. But there's something nebulous, mysterious even, kind of around that that you're trying to get me to see. And as I just lean into it a hair, I guess in that, I'm experiencing, I think, the short-lived tyranny in the in the giving myself to what I do not yet know or understand. In the and there's a way that it is like not just calling me, like in this moment of trying to feel into this kind of nebulous mysteriousness on the edge. I experience it demanding me to look, demanding that where I have not yet been able to understand, to see, that I must look, that I must give myself to that, and that there's something of that. Yes, so let me... That I think you're trying to get me to see We'll, we'll we'll draw draw a couple things together that I'm, that I that I, I hear in that response is the must, the must, the demand, as as a necessity that was unknown prior. There's a new necessity, and I'm 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 wanting to bring the personal into this mm. and i want to open i want to open this up to the personal beauty in in relationship with a person as well as mm. how that affects you viscerally what is the emotion when that demand is placed when when beauty opens up and and it it, it it grabs you by the balls and it's like, okay, pay attention to me. What is that experience like? How do you experience that? One word comes to mind now and it's, it's love. Mm. Mm. It's love. Mm. Love. And and yes, for such a unpleasantly sounding experience at times. Hmm. It's interesting that you say that, Socrates. It's not entirely unpleasant. There is that getting takenness, that grabbed by the balls, as you said. But <laughs> it comes with a deep trust that she who's grabbed me by the balls has taken me somewhere that I actually want to go. <laughs> And with that, there's love. Mm. 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 And with that, you're about at our time, Socrates. Um, so, like, just we'll take one more moment to just kind of soak that in. And then we can return to our normal, unwise selves. Or maybe a little wiser after that. That was great. Yeah, thank you, man. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I something that came out of that for me that I, I just I want to speak to is this sense of like it's it's almost impossible to get it wrong. <laughs> like it, even even especially in the role of being the sage, and often, I mean. 
were like, oh, well, I, I, I'm not Socrates or I have no idea what Socrates would say or whatever. And I, there's something deeper going on there that, that allows it to be possible for anybody to, to, to participate in this practice. Because even, even if I, if I open up a space that maybe leads you away from what you're what what you're getting out of the virtue or the phrase it still provides something to mm. push off against right and 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 by the natural course of holding each other accountable in these roles we just gradually tap each other into place back and forth and so there's a sage like quality to the pupil and there's a pupil like quality to the sage and mm. yes yes totally i got that same sense during it and like all of that in combination with the fact that like you know you could be spouting bullshit but in as much as i'm listening to you as you're a sage i'm going to be listening for the truth in what you said even if it is off like i'm attending to where the insight could be so between those two aspects of me kind of having that generous listening and then what you just described of that like yeah that kind of nudging each other into place and giving things to push off against and like even if it's not the thing it opens up more space to explore like between that it does make it so you can really like you can really play wherever and as long as you're always oriented towards seeing more deeply you're going to see more deeply. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there hasn't been a time where I've, I've done this practice with you or anyone else yet where I haven't walked away feeling like, okay, yeah, there's like a little bit of a shift at, at least I can see something that I didn't see before. Right. Yeah. And, same. And that I, there's, there's a possibility for me to actually bring that into my life in a fruitful way right now. Like, you know, I'll, I'll leave this conversation and, you know, I'll go have dinner with my family. And it's like just that, that very instance, how, how does what I just experienced and the identity that I assumed and, and this dance, how can that dance continue with the music of the next song? Mm. Beautifully put. I am, I'm tyrannized by what you just said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I just want to do I'll do a quick little sign off like thank you anyone who's watching this and um please definitely implore you to like try this out yourself let us know like what sages and what quotes you tried and if you want any variations on it that you came up with that you thought were fruitful like I would love to hear how this gets taken up and um yeah yeah thank you for, for your time and attention <laughs>